Und das heißt, sie ist einfach Timo Maxi. Und es ist eine tolle Geschichte über zehn Jahre. Und irgendwann war es vorbei, weil der Verleger kein Geld mehr gegeben hat. Und ich bin so unglaublich neugierig, wie die jetzt trotzdem weitermachen. Und er wird über beides reden. Please, Timo Good afternoon. I apologize for my flu, so it, you will hear it in my uh, tone of my voice. I'm sorry for that. Uh, I was asked by Boris to share an honest story of our magazine, uh, which, as you may see, ended in 2012. So I will try to openly uh, describe the journey from the very beginnings all the sufferings, all the happiness we enjoyed, all the problems we had, all the uh, successes we achieved uh, through the 10 years. And I will also, for the first time, announce a project which will be released this year and which is a kind of a continuation or a resurrection of the typo idea. Um, to put the Typo magazine in the context, I should start with the Typographia magazine. It's the oldest Czech magazine published since 1888 until today. Uh, they survived all the wars, all the regimes. Of course, there were few breaks in the publishing uh, during the wars and uh, just after the fall of the communist regime. But anyway, they managed to survive and they successfully continue publishing. Uh, when I was looking for the very first issue of the Typographia from 1888, I was looking at the internet and I found this slide. And I was looking for the source of the slide and I realized it's from an antique bookstore and the first year is available for about 12 euros. So I immediately bought it. It was a big surprise because usually the price for the first year is 10 times higher. So this one is the first issue and the last one. Uh, there was another magazine about graphic design, but also about printing and the technical stuff, websites and packaging and uh, advertising called Font, which is still being published and they reached number 138 issues so far. Uh, there was another magazine, Delator. Uh, in the beginning, it was announced as quarterly, but there were only six issues during uh, seven years, so it was not even an annual magazine. Uh, I became an editor of this magazine, I think, since the second or third issue. Uh, so this is the background of the design scene, in, uh, magazine scene related to graphic design in the Czech Republic. And something about me, because I think this is important for the story of Typo magazine. I started a website about Czech typography in 1997. Uh, it was still not possible to buy a domain, so the website address was extremely complicated with even some slashes. Not slashes, slashes are quite common, but with some waves in the address. It was really complicated. And uh, the website was quite successful. I had a lot of visitors because it was the only online source of information about typefaces, about design magazines, font editors uh, in the Czech Republic. You can see three versions uh, I did in 1997, 1999, and the most like real one from 19, uh, 2003. Mm. I also wrote a book about typography, it's called Practical Typography, it's more a guidebook how to use the software to do proper typography on computers, how to set proper uh, numbers, how to use quotes in Czech, German, English, French. Uh, it was, this publication became quite successful, I think the publisher sold around 5,000 copies. It's quite outdated but it's still uh, hunted by students of graphic design. And uh, to finish talking about me, I'm a designer and I have a design studio which I started in 1997 and I named it Designic in 2002. So now back to Typo magazine. This is how it looks like and we, or I brought about 20 copies or maybe 30 copies and they will be available for 
uh, 10 euro each at the bookstore. So you can find, I think, five or six different issues in the store. Uh, in 2002, I was contacted by a publisher and he told me, hey, become an editor of chief in this new project. We will buy the Typographia magazine, the one I mentioned, the oldest Czech magazine, and you will be the editor in chief full time job. I said no, because I didn't want to lose my job as a graphic designer, but I uh, offered a solution. There will be an editorial board and there will be a like, manager of the uh, editors who will take care about deadlines and contacting contributors, etc. And they agreed. So we started to prepare design contest. Jana Vahalíková won the design pitch, uh, and she started to prepare the layout. We were still considering the typographia, so we followed the size of the existing typographia magazine. Then in August, there were huge floods in Prague. Maybe you remember the pictures of Prague flooded by two meters. The historical downtown was flooded with, with, with water. And it was one of the disaster of this year. The second disaster was the Typographia team uh, the owners of the Typographia magazine suddenly decided not to become part of the new project. And they decided they will not accept the takeover. So we had to quickly rename it because there was no time. So it was quite obvious we were thinking about a typo because it was my website, typo.cz. Uh, on the other hand, the typo means a mistake or error uh, in English. So it was a not really good name, but we decided to go for it because it's quite well known, in, at least in Europe, that typo is related to typo graphics, typographia. The first issue was printed in December, but again it was a disaster because the printer did an extremely bad job. The, there was no right angles on the cover. No. Three millimeters, we don't care. So we decided not to accept this as a start of an international magazine because it, we, it, we were horrified by this and we asked them to do it again. Uh, I wanted to show you some pictures of me from that time, but I realized it was not yet the selfie time, so I didn't take pictures of me then. I was in China in 2002 with uh, other part of the team and other members of the team. And this is the only pictures I found on my digital camera from this Chinese trip in Starbucks coffee. And it was my first experience in Starbucks in communist China. So that's me resting in an air conditioned environment. This is my, I think this is my second picture I took on a digital camera. It's from a boat between Hong Kong and Macau. And this is just to illustrate you how the floods in Prague looked like. Usually there are trams and a lot of tourists here and it was covered with, with water. So enough disasters. 2003 is the official launch of our magazine. We started with, uh, I think, 24 pages. In the end, uh, this uh, pe period, which lasted, I think, un until 2008, we had uh, maximum 44 pages. The Czech was the primary language, English was secondary, but all the texts were translated into English. It was published every two months, and uh, most of the topics were local. We decided to create a magazine which would uh, fill the gap of the education. Uh, we thought the Czech and Slovak education is not good enough and students have gaps. They don't know much about the history of Czechoslovak typography. They don't have basic knowledge of uh, the most famous design projects uh, from the history of graphic design of the 20th century. So we decided to uh, talk about quite obvious topics. Uh, Ladislav Sutnar, Eric Gill, for instance, or Adrian Frutiger. Uh, it was quite successful. The publisher was happy. Uh, we were pretty like, a good team and we had a lot of uh, good response from our readers. Uh, the second tier... Uh, oops. Yeah, sorry. The second tier uh, became 
mm, focused on more original text. We realized it doesn't make sense to talk about things people can read elsewhere. So we focused more on original content. So we invited people to write specifically for us, but mostly from uh, our region, so Czech Republic, Slovakia. We had few foreign contributors like Jan Middendorp. And this was the first year the editors uh, went to the, or in the international conferences. We went to Typo Berlin and we joined the A-Type Prague. And it was a huge experience for us. It was an eye-opening event. We were surprised by the international community, by, it, uh, by the friendliness of many people there. And uh, it was a year full of enthusiasm. Uh, as Boris mentioned, the diacritics topic, I wrote a huge uh, article about uh, international accents for this blue uh, issue. I think it was number 10. It was very successful. So we were full of enthusiasm. So this is our, some of our pictures from the Typo Berlin uh, selling uh, copies of our magazine. Next year, probably based on our experience from the conferences, we switched the, the priorities of languages. So the English was most important now and Czech as a secondary language. Uh, we had mostly contributors from abroad. Uh, we stopped publishing local uh, contributors. We had mostly uh, people like Majid Abbasi, Reza Bedini, Johannes Bergerhausen, Kevin Larsen, Albert Jan Paul, Adam Twardoch, to name a few. And for the first time, we published an issue focused on a specific country, which was quite a successful idea, as, it, as you will see later. Uh, 2006, I am afraid this was one, one of the worst years of the existence of the magazines. We were not sure how to continue. We were searching for identity, our identity. We were searching for topics, for contributors, and we started to search for readers because the uh, line of subscription was not rising the way we would like to see it. So we again had a lot of local topics, but anyway, we managed to publish the Russian issue, which was quite successful because Russia, the Russian design was not in the mainstream, in the main focus on in, of international design magazines. And we revealed a lot of uh, very good designers coming from Russia and type designers as well. 2007 was, um, I'm sorry, it was a good year. It started with a Hebrew issue and uh, it was um, a milestone for Hebrew typography and Hebrew design, which I didn't know at the time. I realized that much, much later. Uh, we had a lot of orders of this magazine from Israel and I later realized the local designers, for them, it was the first uh, comprehensive study of Israeli graphic design and typography of late 20th, uh, of the beginning of the 21st century. They never had such a review. So they were very happy that our magazine published this uh, feature. In this year, we also start, we also joined the European Design Award. Um, I guess you know this international competition or European competition. And uh, there is one important guy on this picture, or there are more important guys on this picture, but uh, related to our magazine. Uh, Michel Chanot is a French publisher of Etap magazine, and I will mention him later again. And next to him is uh, John L. Waters, the publisher of I magazine. And this is how our editor meetings edit looked like. We never had an office, so our meetings were always in a, in a restaurant. We were drinking a lot of Merlot at that time. Sunrise, quite a decent wine. Uh, after long discussions, we finally decided to change the size, which were the... Uh, the part of the former Typographia project. So we finally uh, freed ourselves from the concept of Typographia and finally changed the layout, design, paper, binding, uh, size. Everything was changed. And I think it was finally looking good. Mm, honestly, I realized that I was not really happy with the design of the magazine uh, in the first 
six years or five years. So finally, I was re really happy with this redesign. The magazine became thicker. We had between 64 and 136 pages. And we again started to focus more on the international market. I think we, the, the reason we switched between local topics and international topics was based on the subscription numbers. The year we had more subscribers from abroad, we started to focus on them. The year we had more subscribers from the Czech, Czech Republic, we had uh, the focus on, on local topics. In this year we covered um, Jan Chicholt, uh, we had Korean and Italian issue, and also we joined uh, the G4 initiative, it was a Polish project, uh, supported by Visegrad Fund, and it was f uh, covering the graphic design scene in the countries of so-called Visegrad community, which is Slovakia, Czech Republic, Poland, and Hungary. And uh, it was the first time we received um, extra funding from, from an organization like this, which allowed us to create, uh, like to spend more, um, to give more money to contributors and pay uh, more money to our photographers, etc., etc. This is probably the last photo of the whole editorial team at once. Uh, and you soon realize why. Again, in a pub, of course, where else? And because in 2009 there become the baby boom and uh, we were losing one editor by another one, uh, they, were they started to focus more on their babies than uh, or families than on magazines. So in the end, the editorial team was just uh, Linda Kudernowska, the editor-in-chief, and me. Uh, again, the magazine became more international again, and we decided to give focus on uh, less covered regions. We realized that many design magazines in the world reprint the same things, again, same posters, same covers, same logo times. And we wanted to show the world that there are more interesting things and in countries people usually ignore. And uh, for instance, in this role, it was a Mexican issue. It was probably the most successful issue we ever produced because, again, it was one of the first uh, publications covering the whole complexity of uh, Mexican graphic design and typography. It was also published in just before the conference, uh, ATIPI conference in Mexico. So it was planned to uh, support this event by this issue. Uh, in this year, although we launched a new website, we uh, started new subscription form, much better one, better designed. Uh, we launched Facebook account, uh, Twitter accounts. We started to have problems with distribution. Uh, I think you already know uh, about the principles or problems of distribution because it was very well described uh, just before my presentation. And we decided to do the subscription management in-house. I couldn't say it was a mistake, but uh, you can imagine uh, having design studio full of magazines and full of envelopes and going to post office with uh, 20 kilograms of boxes with magazines. It was a it was really, really tough time. And it in the end, it was not that successful. We didn't reach the planned number of uh, subscribers. 2010, we had the thickest issue, 1, 136 pages. It was a mistake because it was about two or three grams heavier than the postage fee limit. So we had to pay twice more for distribution, which was a disaster for our cash flow. Uh, still, we were suffering with distribution. We were suffering with, we started for the first time suffering with money. Fortunately, we joined, a, uh, we call it G4. Again, it's a uh, Polish project in, uh, originally about graphic design, student graphic design in uh, Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia and Hungary. And it was supported by Visegrad Fund again. So f fortunately this grant allowed us to survive the year and we could pay all the contributors and uh, managed to 
continue to 2011. This is just a snapshot from the uh, 2009 and 2010. Uh, as we were members of the European Design uh, Awards, we are also presented some of the award ceremonies. One of the importance of the European Design Award competition for us was there was a very good jury there. Uh, the jury was uh, composed of people who were working for design magazines around Europe. Uh, Editors-in-chief or heads of design uh, sections of those magazines. And for me, it was a fantastic experience to talk about the future of European magazines because we had 12 people from 12 different countries and we could share our experience with distribution, printing, uh, finding contributors, uh, all the technical aspects of publishing magazines. We shared our knowledge, we shared our texts and uh, we became friends, which is also mm, very nice result of this European Design Award. Uh, 2011, we slowly started to focus on type design, or maybe we just um, realized that this is what our readers are in, and uh, so we published some more texts about uh, type design, and uh, we were quite certain the projects will survive next year, because our publisher visited us one day in our office and say, we, I promise I will continue supporting your magazine financially. Don't worry, everything is okay. Because it was during the uh, economic crisis, so we were a little bit of afraid of the future. Uh, we've been to a Tai Pai conference at uh, Reykjavik. We created this fake postcard imitating it was taken in front of the venue, conference venue. Actually, it was a uh, Photoshop collage. We printed it in Prague and uh, spread it in the audience in Reykjavik. But everyone thought we printed this in Reykjavik and they couldn't manage how we do it so quickly. It was my Photoshop work. I'm good in Photoshop, by the way. Uh, 2012, the last year of the magazine, uh, we realized like decreasing support from the publisher. Uh, anyway, he wanted to end after the 38 issues, but we told him, okay, don't give us any money. We will manage the money for the last uh, two issues, but we want to finish 10 years and 50, 50 issues. And s he said, okay. I think since 2012 we were printed digitally uh, and uh, the quality of digital print at that time was amazing. Uh, we showed some of the copies to really experienced old printers and they couldn't f tell us it was printed digitally. So I was very lucky that we find or the digital print finally uh, achieved this, this quality. Uh, we were financed just from grants and ads. We managed to get a few ads from some type foundries. Thank you for it very much. And we started to experiment with the iPad version. So we made the first issue of 2012 for free on uh, the App Store. I expected a huge number of downloads and I was really surprised that uh, it was absolutely unsuccessful project. Uh, we finally, we reached a couple of thousands of downloads, but we expected tens of thousands. But somehow, people were not interested in downloading this issue. We did a lot of promotion on websites, blogs. Uh, we tried to announce it at many, many different places, but... Uh, we didn't succeed. Uh, at the time, we discussed this failure at the eight uh, European Design Awards meeting, and many of the publishers had the same experience with going to iPad, and we still didn't find out why. Maybe designers don't want to read the graphic design publications on iPads. Maybe they just have enough of pixels. Maybe they don't even own iPads. I don't know. But simply, this, is, this does not work well. We had even a supplement f for the graduation project. That's why there's a s an extra cover. I designed a special uh, brochure showing the winners of this uh, design competition. Uh, 2012, the last issue, we, inv we invited some of our friends and contributors to send us a greeting card uh, celebrating the 
50th issue of uh, the typo. Uh, I included um, some of the German contributors you may be familiar with, Fons Hickmann or Johannes Bergerhausen or Albert Jan Paul. You can also see René Knip from Netherlands, uh, Gabriel Meave from Mexico, and uh, Odette Ezer, Israel, and the last one is Design Studio R2 from Portugal. We had, we received, I think, 20 postcards like, th like this, and we published them in the, uh, in, in the magazine. Uh, this was the party uh, cel celebrating the 10th year and 15th issue of uh, typo and you can even see the next speaker among the visitors of this party so i should make a summary or uh, we were proud of many texts written by many contributors uh, there were really good texts among the uh, hundreds of texts we published and some of them were written by very famous people and I'm proud some of them are here in this hall. Uh, I am proud that we achieved quite a consistent editorial work. Uh, the Typo magazine opened the doors of many events for us. We were welcomed to join, uh, to join many, many events around the world uh, without paying the fee, which was... Re I didn't mention, I, never, I was never paid for my work for Typo magazine or Typo magazine. The only one paid for the work was the editor-in-chief. And all the people in the ed editorial team, including me, uh, worked for free. Um, maybe one of the most important thing for me, we made a lot of friends and a lot of good friends during the 10 years of publishing the magazine. And I think this is a thing which will stay forever. This is, while the magazine, you can burn it, but you can't burn friendship. And we achieved quite a respect in the typographic community. So some, uh, in some places they knew us and it was really nice to, to be treated as, as, as friends or people, of, people they know. Just a few slides from the s most successful issues. This was about uh, the underground me or metro. We had an article about metro in Prague, uh, about metro in Paris. There was an article by Jean-François Pochès and uh, then we had an extensive re article about the history of the map uh, from the London Underground. This is uh, a sample from the Hebrew issue number 25, and those are photos from the latest um, 50th issue showing some of the greetings cards we received. Of course, because I promised I will be honest, I should share with you the, the minus of the project. Uh, of course, I was never happy with the number of subscribers. We failed in the management, probably. We failed in the marketing. We pr maybe we failed in the m distribution as well. We never reached enough publisher to be a viable project. So it was always financially supported by the publisher. It was never, never, it never reached like a plus. It was always a minus. Uh, I am not happy that one author fooled us. One lady submitted article which was stolen from another article. She just changed the name of the original writer. We didn't notice that. I'm very sorry for that and I'm, I feel ashamed. And I think one of the like, minus parts or cons was the concept of bilinguality. I think that many people don't like, maybe it's intentional, maybe it's not, they don't like leading books or magazines having two languages next to each other. When we showed our magazine to many people, they've seen one Czech sentence and they said, oh, it's a pity, it's not in English. They didn't realize it's completely translated. So I think this might be one of the problems of the project. Uh, so I don't have much time. So in between 2003 and 2004, we started to discuss what's next. Uh, we visited uh, two annual ATIPI conferences, Amsterdam and Barcelona. We discussed this with our network. And we started to think about an annual bo book. And uh, the final shape of this project started to 
<coughs> become real at the A-Type-I conference in Barcelona last year. And you can see the key figures, Linda Kudrinovska, editor-in-chief, Michel Chanot, uh, publisher, uh, Jose Scalione, uh, the president of the A-Type-I, and me. And uh, at this meeting, we agreed that A-Type-I will collaborate with the publisher and we will create an annual book about typography, type design, graphic design, which will cover the most important events of the year. Uh, may I ask you for a little bit of light? I have three quick questions for the audience, and I would like to see the hands. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope I remember all the questions. So, first of all, who is a subscriber, regular subscriber of a magazine? Be it a design magazine or a nature magazine? Okay, many of you. And who is who buys at least one book a year? Okay. <laughs> and last question. This is I am just interested, and I will talk about it later, very briefly. Uh, we have a lot of fans on Facebook. Typo Magazine has ninety-two thousands of fans of face on Facebook. Is there any one of you following Typo? at Facebook? Oh, I'm surprised you are. Thank you. You can dim the light again. Thank you. And partly inspired by Jacek Utko, the Polish newspaper designer, uh, we realized that there is a general switch from newspaper to magazines, from magazines to books, at least in the design expression. Uh, we realized our target group simply does not subscribe magazines, but they still buy books. So we, this was one of the principles of, of this future project. We call 365 Time Home. And we also realized many websites and blogs disappear in time on the internet. Uh, simply, you can't find them anymore. They, they are gone. And there were excellent blogs. I was going to read them from time to time, they are gone. So uh, the idea, oh, again, sorry, uh, it's quite difficult to effectively make an archive of electronic media. You can use so software like Pocket, but what will be with Pocket in the next 10 years? It may disappear as well. It may be bought some company, it may be too expensive. Uh, so we also realize we have a fantastic number of contributors around the world. Uh, members of the ATIPI board of directors expressed their interest in this book, and we have a lot of fans at Facebook. Actually, I don't know why, because the magazine does not exist for two years, and we still have 850 new fans every week. So, this is a little teaser. This is an introduction of this future project for the first time in public. Uh, it will be an annual book published in collaboration with ATIPI. It will have 365 pages featuring 365 key issues, events, themes, fonts related to graphic design industry covering the last year. It will be, I hope, written by the best contributors around the world. And uh, for me, it, 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 is not, it is an important project for the future because it's kind of a time capsule. It will not only print special text written just for us, but it will print existing um, blog posts. It will print existing articles from different magazines published, for instance, in Polish only or German only. So it will make accessible the best texts available in one comprehensive book. And I think it will be a great for future research because if you would like to know what was hot, what was important in 2014, you just open this book and you will find it out. Uh, we will also have an online blog featuring 360 posts, 65 posts a year, and we will also continue our presence on Facebook. This is very, very first draft of the layout, uh, so not finished texts and not uh, final selection of images, but this is how it might look. So quickly leave this website, uh, this slide, because uh, we will continue working on it very much. 
And if you want to be the first who will get information about this project, please register. Our website is unfortunately not running yet, so I can only guide you to this uh, temporary address. But if you will fill in your address, you will not only be informed about uh, the launch of the book, but you will also get a special discount if you subscribe it uh, or buy it online from, from the website. And that's all. Thank you very much.